my name is Melissa. I go by Millie. Um, my graphic design business name is Millie Creative because I do a lot of creative things. So if you're that type of person who loves just creating things, graphic design is a very good role because you're able to create so many things. And I'm about to show you guys a little bit about some of the stuff that I've created along my career, which actually didn't even start off as a career. It started off as a hobby. And now I've been designing for 10 years, but I've been doing it professionally for three years. And what I mean by that is that I've been getting paid for three years, really good money, doing design. I was able to put myself through college. Um, I went to Cal Poly Pomona. I majored in um, advertising and sales, which helps me a lot as a freelance graphic designer. I also went to San Bernardino Valley College, where I studied graphic design. I went to Chafee College, where I got my transfer, G, where I did my GE, so I could get transferred to Cal Poly Pomona. So that's a little bit about my education. Here's a little bit about my experience. Um, I've worked at a digital media agency where we work with a lot, it's kind of like an agency, they give you a lot of clients and they just give you jobs, so they'll give you random jobs. But it really helped me a lot because it helped me learn how to switch from working with somebody who makes food product to work with somebody who makes uh, clothing, to work with somebody who makes, let's say, um, I don't know, cars or something like that. I also worked with event planners, um, Encore Events. I always made all their invitations, their stated dates. I actually never met them. I don't know what they looked like. If I sat, stood next to the owner of, the, of this company, I would not know who she is, but I, it's crazy because I've made thousands of dollars from, from them, but I never met them because of graphic design. I got to work from home um, while I was in college. Uh, I also work with social media influencers. I help them launch businesses. I help them establish their design aesthetic to be able to market themselves and launch um, merch companies and eyelash companies. And currently, I'm working in the fashion industry. I work in Los Angeles off of Melrose Avenue at a little boutique called Sorella Boutique. It's like a trendy women's fashion store, kind of like Fashion Nova, but we have our own style. And we're a boutique, so we're a little bit smaller. Um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I got started. So I, I'm really curious to know, like, who here had a MySpace? One, okay, two. Oh my God, you guys are you guys were ahead of your time. You guys are cool. So for th those of you guys who never had a MySpace, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about what the profiles look like. Now this was not my design, okay? I cannot take credit, nor do I want to. But this is pretty much a MySpace profile. You would have your background. This was like the contact section, and then you had a little place where you could put a little banner. Um, you, so people would customize them. When, these were normally just white and blue. And during this time, I had like the coolest MySpace. Not to brag, but my MySpace was pimped out. Like It was one of the coolest ones, and I loved it. I didn't know what I was doing was design, but I knew that I wanted to have a cool MySpace. And my, this was actually the first time that I ever got paid to do graphic design. My friends were like, hey, can you do my profile? And then they were like, I'll give you 20 bucks. And for me, back then, I was like, 20 bucks? Heck yeah. So that was the first time I got paid to do some design work. Um, after that, I started doing invitations for myself and for my friends. And it was really a hobby. So my first interest started with paint. Who remembers paint? Okay, that's when I learned that everything was a pixel. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And then I didn't have the money for Photoshop because back then there was no subscription. You had to like put the money down and I was only making $20 to make this. I could never afford Photoshop back then. So I found this weird program called Photo Filter, but I literally learned like kind of the basics of like how like to cut, paste, how to delete, stuff like that. And then it wasn't until I was in high school, kind of like you guys, I was like a, 11th grader, I took a graphic design class over in Colton High School, and that's when I learned about Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. I learned a little bit about everything, and I loved it. So then I went to Photoshop, I went to Illustrator, and now I just love learning all the Adobe programs. They have so many options for like video, for photos, and um, this is kind of like my path. Currently, I'm making more video stuff, which I'll show you guys later, okay? But all my foundation, it all got started through these programs. And when it comes to learning, like, when it comes to being a graphic designer, you can never stop learning because there's always a new trend. There's always, there's always something new in art. 
there's always stuff to do. I started learning graphic design in high school, and then I continued it in college, but then it just skyrocketed. I started YouTubing things all the time, and Lynda.com is actually a really good resource for very, very, very good like online courses that are actually structured, and they, I found that those helped me a lot because they flow. YouTube is kind of scattered, but Lynda.com was a great place where I actually learned a lot of things from, and I still learn things every day. So, so let's say you're thinking about doing graphic design, you know how to make some things here and there. Um, I want to talk to you guys about some things that I wish I knew when I was your age, because I think that when it comes to getting uh, clients, it's something that probably wasn't taught to me during my education, and it's just some stuff that I wish I knew, because I could have probably started making money a lot sooner. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of tips about how to, how to work with clients, and honestly, this could even be your parents, your brothers, your friends. I'm giving you guys some tips on how to manage it. That way, once you get it done, you can start doing this over and over, and then maybe you can have some side income for you, because I think a side income is always good to have. So step number, I mean, tip number one is to always be your own client first. So anytime you get an excuse to like design something, let's say, um, for me, it was always my birthday. Every time it was my birthday, I was like, oh, I can't wait to make my flyer. My invitation, I'm sending it out to all my friends. I would always design it. And in school, let's say it was a boring class that I didn't like. Like I think I had a like politics or something like that. I had to make a presentation and I was just like, oh. you know what? I'm gonna make it fun. I'm gonna actually design my presentation and make it cute. And my teachers always were like, they would appreciate the extra work that I put in by designing it and making it look pretty. And I think that's why I got a little higher grades. So be your own client first. Another thing is to share your work online and in person. I have this Instagram that is only for my work, and I have a, a portfolio that is all for my work, and every time I make something, I post about it. I tell people like, hey, I just made this, or hey, just made this, or wow, I was so thankful to be able to make this for so-and-so. And when you start sharing your work, then people start knowing that, hey, this girl actually is interested in graphic design. They start thinking next time they need graphic design, they might contact you. Um, and I think if you're really serious, you gotta like try to make a name for yourself. For me, I decided that Millie Creative was like my name that I wanted people to know me as because I really think it's important to just put yourself out there. And hey, apply for jobs. Even if somebody says, oh, I'm looking for a graphic designer, go for it. Just apply for it or stuff like that. Put yourself out there if, if you um, wanna get that experience. Um, and uh, one thing that I would say is like, uh, some of you guys already have portfolios, so I would say if you're going to apply for someone, let's say they're looking for somebody who does um, vector illustrations, don't send them a portfolio with your business cards on it, unless it has vectors on it. Like, I always customize my portfolio every time I send it for every application. It's, it's special to them, and then they feel like, wow, this person actually really wants this job. And um, I've actually been very lucky that every portfolio I've sent out, I've gotten a response, and I've gotten a good response, and I've gotten hired many times. So those are some tips on getting clients. Then once you get with clients, it comes to the trickier part, where it's how to work with them. So these are just some tips that I would say, if you guys are working with clients, these are my guidelines that I like to follow, just to keep things professional, right? So, so right off the bat, somebody says, hey girl, I need, a, I need a business card. I'll say, okay. So I start asking questions. Okay, so I start to say, like, oh, who is this business card for? Oh, it's for my dad's uh, car company. Okay, uh, what, what does he need? He needs a business card. Oh, and also he needs stickers. Okay, uh, when do you need it by? Oh, I need it by next next month. Oh, cool, yeah, that's possible. And then um, why is it that you guys are taking interest in getting these things done? Oh, you know, we want business cards because we're about to open. We're starting to do this. Oh, you guys are opening a new shop. Oh, do you guys also need maybe a banner for outside? Do you guys also need this? So from asking questions, you're able to figure out what do they want and what they could use, and you're able to even upsell. So once you figure out what they need, always establish the deliverables. So then you say, okay, then I'm, I'll gladly make you a business card, stickers, and the banner. And that way when you deliver everything, they're not like, hey, what happened to the flyers? Then you can go back and say, oh, well, we established the deliverables, and the flyers weren't in there. But you know what? We can, we can start that too. But that way there's no, um, nobody's... Nobody's saying, hey, you forgot something. 
Uh, and another thing is to always set a price that allows for up to three revisions. Um, some people put this in a contract because a lot of people will sometimes have changes, and that's just normal because we're, we're graphic designers. We're not mind readers. Like, that's one thing I'll tell you guys. But people will tell you something, and they expect you to know what they mean. Like, oh, I want something that's very, like, trendy, like, cool. And you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to, like, give yourself that space to, like, create something, have them give you their input, and then create something else, input, something else, input. I would say up to three times. That's kind of usually when I get, get the final product to look good for the client to like it. So I allow my price for them because if I only price for one revision and then they ask for revisions, uh, I'm a, and you don't you don't have the time or the money, I just I would recommend giving you that price because it's gonna avoid a lot of like like not feeling like oh I have to do another revision. Like no, it's fine because it's in the price. So I would just say that because revisions could be very like touchy times like when they say oh I don't like it we need to revise it. Don't take it personal because it's already set up in the price, right? Um, another thing is to set realistic deadlines. So be real with yourself. If you have homework, if midterms are coming up or finals, don't say that you can get it done on that Friday. Because let me tell you, like, you're not. It's gonna things are gonna come up. So always be realistic with your deadlines and let them know, like, okay, um, I actually have some some finals coming up, but I will be free after Friday. So. Give me those three, five days after Friday, and I'll have it done by Tuesday. So be realistic with your deadlines. That way they're not nagging at you. That way they're not mad. They don't feel like, hey, like you're late. You know, it's like we're both, we know the deadline. And then another thing that I would always say is don't pick up a pen or paper until you get a deposit. Um, this has happened to me a lot of times where I'll create a logo, I'll create something, and then all of a sudden the customer doesn't want it anymore, and you're left with no money. No, nothing, and it's not like you. It's there's nothing you can do. So I would just say cover yourself and get that deposit just in case anything happens. You never know. And then some people do contracts. Um, it just depends on the the amount for me. Like if it's something that's really like low price, I won't bother making a contract. But if it's something high price, I'll make a contract just to keep things um civil, just to keep things easy. They know I I know what I'm gonna do. They know what they gotta do. So. Contracts are, are important too sometimes. Okay, so on that, so now that we have our guidelines, I kind of want to talk about a very like a very important topic when it comes to graphic design, especially if you're going to be doing this freelance. But I think even at, at work, even at work, like there'll be sometimes issues, and we need to know how to solve these issues because as graphic designers, we're not only um, we're creating a service, but we're also problem solvers. Like every we're doing is solving a problem for a business so let's say business card the problem you're solving is that they want people to have their contact information okay so you're creating a business card that solves the problem of them not being able to give their contact information easily uh, creating a banner outside well they want people to know that that's their location so you're solving the problem you're making them visible on the street so I feel like everything has kind of like a problem that we're solving everything has a purpose really um, so let's say that there's an issue the guy says, I hate this business card. I just, I don't, I don't like it. Okay, so these are my five steps that I take to to not take things personal, but to get down to the issue and be able to solve, solve like why he doesn't like it and to be able to continue with the process. Because one thing that you don't want to hit a roadblock where they don't, where, where you don't get paid no more. Like you want to continue the process till the end so they can be happy, you can be happy, and you can get paid um, your full money. So number one is like acknowledge their issue. Okay, sir. I understand you don't like your business card. Um, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Be like, you know, it's the first one. I'm glad you're letting me know that you that there's an issue with it. Um, can I ask you some questions to figure out like what's up, what's wrong with it? They'll be like, yeah. And then number two, like look for the root of the problem when you're asking the, the questions. So ask them like, my favorite question is like, oh, okay, um, don't say what's wrong because nothing's wrong. It's just not right <laughs> for them so say oh what's missing or say what would you like to have seen or um, what can we change to make this better uh, why it's like well why do you think why do you think that this isn't like hitting the mark stuff like that those questions really get to the root of the issue so the guy could say oh you know what's wrong with it is what's missing is uh it's missing um it's missing our colors like it's missing red and black and, and I want it to be more on our brand. And you know what? Um, 
I think that the font is too small. I can't read it. I need glasses and I never wear them, so I can't read it. Oh, and say, okay. So then three, once you figure out the issue, is to propose a solution and a revision. All right, sir, I see that you think the font is a little bit too small. I see that the colors aren't on brand. So what I suggest is that we swatch the exact colors that you've been using on the paint on your walls so we can get that exact color. And I'll make the, the font bigger. Uh, I'll make the font bigger, of course, there'll be less space. So how about we remove um, your fax machine number and then we can make the, the font bigger. Are you okay with that solution? They'll say yes, or they'll say no, I really want the fax number in there. I'll say, okay then, what if we, what if we put all the information on the back and the front is just the logo? What if you do double-sided printing then? They'll say, oh, okay, actually that works. I like that solution. So once they, once they say yes, the solution works, you're good. You can continue on with the project and you finish and you get paid. And if they say, no, you know, I don't, I don't want to do double-sided printing. That's more expensive. Then you start back at number one. Be like, okay, I understand that it's expensive for you. I understand that budget is an issue. Let's try to figure it out. So ask more questions. And this is just the way I cycle through because issues will arise. And I find that this is kind of the way that I handle them. All right, so, and then here are my guidelines for finishing projects. So you got through all the issues. You did everything they wanted. Now they're happy. They love it. So how do you finish your project? I always like to come in with appreciation. Like, hey, thank you so much. Working with you has been really great. I appreciate your attention to detail. I appreciate the way you made my, you make, uh, you helped me create a better, better, the best business card ever for, well, I don't know. Just appreciate something about them. And then always ask for feedback. Be like, let me know what you think. Something that I say so much. I should probably have a button that like just types it. Like, Look, let me know what you think. I always say that because feedback is important. Um, another thing is I always deliver everything via email to have a paper trail to say, hey, yeah, I sent this to you actually on Tuesday. If you didn't receive it, I can try sending it to you again. Do you have another email? Maybe that one didn't work. Um, but you always want to have a paper trail of, of emails. And another thing is to keep your files forever, like forever, seriously. Like you'll never know when a client might come back and say, hey, girl, remember you made my business card last year? I want more, but this time I want a thousand. Uh, this time I want 10,000 because we're doing so great. Be like, oh, cool. I don't even have to redesign it. I already have the file in my external hard drive, which is something that I really recommend because computers can break. They can get water on them, something. Mm -hmm. Always have a backup. Um, and then right at the end, offer more services because that's really where you're going to make your extra money. So ask them, like, hey, so now that you have your banners done, is there anything else that you need? I'm pretty sure by now you know a little bit more about them. So try to upsell them. Like, hey, in the future, if you if you plan on doing any events, I can make flyers for you. Let them know what you do. Because you might think that everyone knows what can be done through graphic design. But some people will be like, wow, I never knew that you made, um, I never knew that you designed tents for pop-ups. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, I designed tents for pop-ups. Uh, they'll be like, wow, I never knew you did door door hangers. Yeah, I designed that too. Just try to give them a, always try to give them like a relatable uh, service. Like make it tailored to them. And hey, you might be able to make more and more money, more money. And when it comes to freelance, it's really good to, to do that. And then let's say they're done. They're like, no, I'm good. Always ask kindly, like, okay, thank you so much. I really enjoyed working with you. I hope you enjoyed working with me. If anybody, ever, if you know anyone who ever needs any graphic design help, I would appreciate it so much if you gave them my contact number. Let them know. Thank you so much. And that's the way that I like to close the, the, the project by leaving the door open for more. All right, so now that you know how to get clients, you know how to get through issues, you know how to close it by leave, by, while leaving um, the door open, let's say, now you have to think about like, what's your style? What's your niche? Because if you just leave that door open for anyone, you can be living what I lived for a while as a freelancer where I would get jobs from all over. Like I would get jobs for smog shops, for fashion, for cupcakes, for, for so many things. You name it, I've probably designed for it. Um, and it can get hard sometimes because it's a lot of bouncing around. All of a sudden, you're designing really cool cart stuff. That's a certain style. And then you have to switch it to like cute girly cupcakes. It's kind of hard. So let's say you want to find your style. I would recommend to just like think outside of design. 
So like the world is so big. There's so many things out there that we can do as careers. I think that when you say you want to be a graphic designer, okay, cool. But what else do you like to do outside of design? You have to ask yourself that. And for me, I love makeup. I love fashion a lot. And I also loved like anything girly. Like I was a girl, I'm the girly one in my family. So then I realized, hey, like, what if I designed for like fashion brands? What if I designed for makeup brands and stuff like that? And then I was, I loved that idea. Cause I was like, I love that. Because that would reflect on my work. And when you reflect on your favorite work, then you start to realize, I really love doing, um, I really love doing apparel. So then you can start looking for those clients. You can start giving yourself attention for them. Um, and then if, if you really don't know, how about you just design for fun? And then look at what you make. So let's say you're designing for fun and, and you design a butterfly. And then all of a sudden, if someone says, hey, that's a cool sticker. And you're like, oh, really? It's just a butterfly. All of a sudden, hey, you could be really good at make, designing cute stickers and that could be your thing. Um, so this is something I designed just for fun, just because I was, I was bored and I was like, ah, so many things coming out of my mind. I don't know. And I did this on Photoshop. And sometimes just designing for fun could be really fun too. It doesn't always have to be for a client because remember, you're always your first client. And I think that designing for yourself sometimes is, is really cool and it's a good form way to express yourself. So why not?